Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome to the Yellowstone edition. <laughs> We're out here with my wife, Marissa, and Brooks over near the west entrance of Yellowstone. And we came across here and uh, of course, you see this all the time and you're told so many times over and over and over. And this is my first time here, but uh, you can see the real thing, people up close uh, to the bison, way too close and uh, taking the selfies, turning their back to the bison and whatnot. And, uh, What's funny is the bison, some of these, uh, some cows and some bulls are making their way uh, west, straight towards these people, and they're kind of in their way. But, you know, you see the videos and you hear about it all the time and you, you read all the warning signs and, and all that, that uh, the park really tries to tell you what to do and be safe. And this is a perfect example right here of what not to do. And uh, we're up here on a hill. Uh, this cow right here is probably... 70 yards from us maybe and um, we've got trees around us a place to escape and these people are out here um, we're nowhere to run perfect example welcome to a yellowstone basically and uh like i said it's our first time here my first time here and uh of course we're gonna go where the bison are and find them and this is just one of those things right here where it's for real people people are out here in the middle of this beautiful uh valley I'm not sure the name of it and uh, they're getting way too close to the bison and i know i can get close to the bison my bison that are used to me every day i don't trust those bison out there at all it doesn't matter how much i've been around bison or bison people have been around uh bison their own or others they know not to get that close out there in the middle of the field <laughs> these are different right out here All right, guys, now we are at a place called Lamar Valley. If some of you have been to Yellowstone, you probably know everything basically I've been talking about, but Lamar Valley is on the furthest east side of the Yellowstone uh, property park. You guys probably can't see it. They probably look like little specks out here, but this is a beautiful, beautiful valley. This is kind of what I pictured when I came to Yellowstone. It's a place like this, but there's, there's a lot of bison here um, in this valley. And, they just they stretch for a couple miles here but there's a just a beautiful setting you've got the river running right here and you got the cascade of the mountains and it's a beautiful scene and uh, talked and asked uh, a couple of park people where's the best place to to find the bison and uh there's two major places during the winter time that you can find them that they said and one of them's lamar valley and the other one i believe is hayden valley and uh like i said this one was on the furthest east side and luckily because of some of the damage from this summer of the major flooding and the major damage that the, the, the high waters caused 
um, in the, the east and northern part of Yellowstone. Actually, one of the roads got opened up today and we were actually able to go further east because they've fixed up the road some. Um, but you can still see some of the debris left over uh, from the water damage in some of these uh, valleys where the river had washed up all this uh, lumber and all the trees and, and piled them up all, along the river here and and even like on curves of the roads you can tell where they've been doing a lot of construction to repair the damage but just a beautiful scene here um, we've heard that there's sizes of herds up here that are 4,000 plus sizes of herds we've seen a bunch um, on the way out here, basically from Mammoth Springs over, we saw four or five different herds that ranged anywhere from 50 to 100 in size. But here, there are hundreds of bison here, and it's just a beautiful setting. And it's, you take time just to sw uh, you take it in and absorb it. They're they're very far away from us, you know. Uh, the minimum here, as you could tell earlier in the video, I was talking about uh, the minimum distance. Of to uh, get close to a bison to take pictures and whatnot is 25 yards. And what we watched earlier and our encounter earlier with those people, me as a bison owner, I'm like 25 yards is still way too close to, to these wild bison and they're unpredictable. And uh, a lot of the times it's not that they're coming after you, you're just in their way. And those people were in their way earlier, so. We're just driving around having a good time seeing all the different landscapes this place has there's so many different landscapes you're just driving and uh everywhere you go it's just it's different and it's beautiful but these valleys for sure are um, amazing and what what else is amazing that these animals can eat 30 to 40 to 50 pounds of grass a day and that's how big this park is and uh right now i've heard that this is one of the largest the herd has been up to almost 6,000 animals or right at 6,000 animals. And that's the largest it's been is what I've been told. It's funny. These are the lawnmowers of the grazing world. These are the lawnmowers of the Yellowstone and they are the animals along with the other wildlife, elk, moose, and antelope. They're the animals that keep this ecosystem in check, but the bison is the number one um, lawnmower and best grazer especially in this landscape in America. We're uh, gonna keep going. We're gonna go to a place called Grand Junction and start making our way back home. But it is a beautiful setting here, seeing all these American bison hanging out where they should be. Guys, yeah, something amazing just happened. Um, this is Yellowstone Lake. So we're kind of in the, I don't know what you call it, Grant Village area maybe, or, or fishing, uh, fishing dock area. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I should know my locations a little better. So it's my first time to Yellowstone. But something unique could just happen. But what do you guys notice here? Anything interesting? The beach here, right? There's nobody on it. It's just me, Marissa, and Brooks. Literally, that is it. We've been over here hanging out for a couple of hours. It's a beautiful, beautiful lake. Uh, this lake, by the way, has, gets uh, was carved out by glacier from the last ice age, carved out Yellowstone Lake. And uh, just learn a couple things here and there as we make our rounds through the park and whatnot. But um, pretty, pretty sad to see water's crystal clear. But anyway, so there are two uh, park buildings right here. And there's another one up here, and then there's a boat that they keep. And obviously, this is for the summer. Uh, one of the big hotels is up here. It's a big yellow hotel, um, and it's all boarded up and everything. Everything is closed down. But the best part about this so far is there's been hardly any people 
at all in the park. I mean, there's still been some people, but it's very quiet. And I'm sure these beaches in the summer are super busy, but here's my point. We're just sitting over here hanging out. My wife and I, Brooks is taking a nap and a bull elk comes up here and uh, starts uh, eating around this building. You know, they tell you not to approach <laughs> the animals. Well, uh, I, I slowly got up to him, oh, I don't know, 25 yards or so, and uh, was able to set my GoPro down and, and watch him. And uh, it may seem like I'm a lot closer, but I was able to put my camera down and step away because I think it is breeding season here um, for elk. I could be wrong. But anyways, I was able to put my GoPro down and uh, he was kind of going in this grazing pattern. I was like, I'm gonna take a guess of where he's going. And he was kind of moving this way. And anyways, I set the GoPro up, hopefully to catch him. And I got some great footage. Here it is right here. So cool, so fun. I've always been a uh, huge animal fan, and, and elk is not in our part of the country in, o in southern Oklahoma. There are elk in Oklahoma, but just to get up that close to that animal that thrives in Yellowstone National Park. And uh, I think the elk, there's more elk than bison here, is what I think I heard um, a National Park employee say, actually. So pretty interesting stuff. But never been up that close to an, a, an elk. And he, I stayed out of his grazing pattern. I did, I did put the GoPro down, and he came over and checked it out. But uh, we didn't bother him. And, 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 you know, the only thing, the only reason I was able to do this is because there was nobody else around. Basically, it was just me and my wife. And Marissa was staying way back and just trying to get some good footage of him. It, it, we wouldn't be able to do this. I mean, it's there's no sound here. It's just just uh, nature and this beautiful lake here next to us. So, uh, you know, you appreciate moments like this. What a fun experience. And uh, Brooks is all asleep. So I recorded it so she can watch it um, whenever she wakes up. But thought I'd share this with you. We're on day four of, of Yellowstone. And we spent a lot of time in this park. Driving around a lot and uh, whatnot. But we're headed to Jackson Hole to stay there a couple days. So we'll uh, keep you updated with everything, but just it's, it's been a joy and this is just just a little bit of extra, you know, to really make it so peaceful here when there's nobody around and it's silent and you can just enjoy the moments with your family. And uh, then if you're patient and quiet, good things like that happen sometimes. You gotta have a little luck of being in the right place at the right time, um, you know, like this situation where a bull elk comes up here and there's a cow too but she didn't come up very close so So here we are in Yellowstone. Old Faithful is about 15 miles just to the south here. Madison Village, Madison Campground is uh, probably just five miles north of me. That's where this location is. So why am I here stopping? This is the area of the 1988 fire that occurred here. It's by far one of the largest fires in Yellowstone. Uh, there's been two fires, the 1988 fire, which was this area and the 2016 fire. Now this area, you can hear lots of traffic. We're on the main area, like I said, uh, Old Faithful's down the road here. I'm gonna scoot down in here a little bit so you guys can hear me a little bit better. But you can see all these, uh, looks like some pine trees. I'm not sure of my my pine tree species here. Uh, I do love pines, by the way. I'm a huge fan of pine trees, I love them. What's, you can easily tell where these fires occur. And you can see right over here across the road, right here, all those trees, are at the same height. Now it doesn't, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But uh, you can see where these fires went through. And uh, 
a lot of them, the recent ones, you still see a lot of standing uh, debris, uh, dead trees in the ground and whatnot. You can see a lot of it here, actually. You can look inside this forest and you can see a lot of the dead trees uh, that came through with the fire. Matter of fact, you can still see black right there. That's crazy. You can see a lot of black on these trees still left over. When you have that big a fire that comes through here and completely wipes the landscape out um, and does that much of damage. And when I say damage, that's a, I'm gonna be careful with that word. What it does is just kind of completely start over. And, and a lot of those nutrients go back in the ground. Now, Smokey the Bear it is, a, is a, it has been a good marketing tool for a long time to teach people how to use fire correctly and that fire can be very dangerous we know that but Smokey the bear also has put a lot of false marketing and false information out there as well because fire as you can tell what we just did at the ponderosa fire can also be very resourceful and very beneficial to the land and uh, as you know, I've been talking to them about that a whole lot recently. If you go back and watch our fire video, Ethan and Cole Fagan, those guys that they concentrate, this is a lot of their career uh, involves fire. And so part of that, part of their work is fire. A lot of it is. And if you can go back and watch that, they tell you how important fire is and what it really does to the land. Now, in this case, it did destroy a forest, and I'm sure it was really ugly in 1988, 1989, 1990. I'm sure it wasn't a very pretty place at all. But what happens is these are naturally seeded pine trees. After that fire comes through, you guys can see the debris here behind me. After that fire comes through, this is what comes up. Nobody came out here and planted these. Nature took its own course and this is what comes up because this is what naturally occurs here is these specific species of pine trees. Uh, they're beautiful trees, but and the same thing where we are, where, where it, the land has not been protected and fire has not been used like at the Ponderosa, what happens? You get cedar trees and then you get the invasive blackberry bushes that take over and they they're taking over the prairie land they're taking over your grasslands and stuff like that in, in in oklahoma so in oklahoma and other parts of america fire is a huge resource and in our case we wipe out the cedars you wipe out the blackberry bushes and you open up the landscape you bring back the native grasses which is what we're asking for and what we're trying to do is bring back those native grasses which is for the bison and for the other wildlife as well including deer and, and all them critters. With that being said, here the native grasses aren't coming back in this specific area of Yellowstone. You're looking at the pine trees coming back. Everywhere is different, but fire has its own way of doing things to the land, and it's been used for several years. Native Americans used it for a long time um, out in the Great Plains, and so you guys probably already know that. But anyways, we were driving, and I saw this sign that it said that this was a reseeded. This was a reseeded area, naturally reseeded from the 1988 fire, and I can't imagine what this place looked like in 1988, 89, 90, the years that followed it. And I'm sure it looked pretty docile, and nothing uh, was here but a bunch of debris. So, just uh, showing you, even in Yellowstone, what things happen, good things happen, how fire has been used. Even though this was an accidental fire, look what it does to the land. Coming back. So we spent three nights in a town called West Yellowstone. It's right near the west entrance of Yellowstone National Park. We spent three nights there and spent four days driving around the National Park. But we had an interesting entrance into Grand Teton National Park, which is just south of Yellowstone. So we left Yellowstone and we headed south and we were greeted with a beautiful, beautiful sunset and scene. You could see the fire. Uh, smoke in a distance 
and uh, it was just south of uh, Teton National Park it looked like and it was what we later found out was a prescribed burn but when we got there the bison were out in this field uh, I don't know the specific field name but it, it was just one of the most beautiful scenes that I know Marissa and I have ever encountered matter of fact there was a park ranger there that the herd was getting really close to the road into the fence and people were getting a little close and she actually was telling people to get back and so i went and talked to her and she said even herself who's worked in this park for a while that she hasn't seen anything like it and it was just an amazing sunset an amazing timing for us to just come through there uh, to catch this beautiful sunset not only were the bison there below the mountains and you had the smoky uh haze from the fire in the back and the sun catching creating all these beautiful orange and red and pink colors um, as the sun's setting behind uh, the teton mountains but the horses there is a wild uh, there are wild horses there at teton national park and they were out there as well so the bison are coexisting out here with the horses and it was just a complete beautiful scene uh, unlike that we've ever seen and we just got really lucky with the timing and so that was our uh, greeting into grand teton national park so we sat there and hung out for maybe 45 minutes or so the bison crossed and jumped over this little wooden fence and um, crossed the road and so we sat there and watched it and just uh, enjoyed um what we were what we were watching it was amazing so we spent four days in jackson hole wyoming and what we did was we spent a lot of time in grand teton national park we did a lot of back roading and <laughs> drove around a lot just couldn't do a lot of hiking with brooks uh, <laughs> it was hard on her and uh, so we we did spend a lot of time in the car driving around yellowstone and the tetons and it was just much easier and safer and this was a great way for her to see wildlife this one. i saw a lot of animals we saw a lot of pronghorn antelope we saw some mule deer uh, we hiked around jenny lake which is a beautiful lake right there in the middle of the tetons Uh, we saw some moose uh, we were able to make it down mormon row and this kind of this famous uh, sort of setting here with these uh, i believe they're lodgepole pine barns that are still existing from the early 1900s and some of these barns are actually still operating some of them are just for uh, significant history points and whatnot so pretty amazing that a lot of these barns are still existing here from many many years went and did some exploring around some rivers and creeks uh we did a lot of back road like i said but we found some hidden lakes and actually what was really interesting in some of these places these back roads where the national forest blends in there's a lot of private ranches just out in the middle of nowhere and so we discovered some of those ran across some eagles which was really awesome because it's hard to see eagles in oklahoma but we saw quite a few eagles in the tetons and yellowstone you see it babe look brooks look at the eagle and then we kept going back to this place which is where we first saw the bison in the teton national park this area was called the elk ranch flats turnout it was once a farm ranch at one time and was sold out eventually and then the teton national park um, got their hands on it just an absolute beautiful setting this time we were able to catch the bison again uh, this time we were able to actually be the first ones in front of the line of the traffic line and watch them cross the road uh, slowly and it was funny a red dog stopped in the middle of the road and just hung out like they own the place and you know essentially they do and so it's just kind of fun to see that attitude even from a red dog of uh how these animals respond to 
traffic and people and cars and uh, they just made their way across the road so we just sat there and watched them We had a beautiful trip, and uh, we were had glad a beautiful that time. We could share beautiful scenery, guys, awesome beautiful bison, animals. Awesome. We had a great time with Brooks. Thank you guys for following us along. We'll see you next time at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. Thank you guys. He's the bro chino. Dusty's gonna put him in the back of the SUV and take him on. That's the one you want to throw in the back? That's the one. That guy right there. Out of these three. I mean... He's young too. He's, pr he's pretty cute. He's the... Yeah, yeah. I bet he's I super if, sweet. I don't know if Big Joe would be happy. Or Dunbar. But... They may be kind of jelly because she sure is pretty. Should be nice to have one though. Man.